it's a company sanctioned lie. And this was a systemic thing. Airbnb's business was actually illegal in its top 20 markets for the first like three to five years. Every platform business is kind of a hedge against the regulation at the time. This is not some shocker news to Airbnb. People inside of Airbnb knew what Domeo was doing. It is in their best interest to take some action, but not ultra aggressive action. Domeo is one of a few of these short-term rental startups. A short-term rental startup is a business, it's a linear business. They own the inventory, inventory is on their balance sheet. They basically take apartments, they're furnished and they rent them on Airbnb, VRBO, directly to the consumer if they can. Just an alternative to hotels, just like what Airbnb is providing. Think of it as like professionally managed inventory on Airbnb. Uh, so you have, you know, you have a certain quality and brand with each one of these apartments, right? So if you're a consumer, it's like a, it's a Domeo branded apartment. There's a few other of these companies, Sonder, uh, Lyric, which is having a lot of trouble. I mean, all these companies are having trouble because of the pandemic. Um, and, and all their inventory are in these more highly populated areas, metropolitan areas. And um, so they're all having a difficult time. It's a very um, capital intensive business. You have these leases on your balance sheet, right? They are actually leasing these properties and then essentially reselling them on these short term rental sites like Airbnb. When you look at the listing growth on Airbnb and where that's coming from, actually, a lot of it is coming from these kind of professional listers, you know, people that actually have a real business listing properties on Airbnb as opposed to where Airbnb started which is with, uh, you know, like user generated, right? I, this is my, this is my home. This is my apartment. Maybe you have two homes. Maybe you're just out of town. Dark red are full homes, uh, available less than six months. So, you know, think about that as again, kind of that original user. This is, this is someone's home. They're, they're now leaving for vacation or whatever. They have a second home. So the red, you can see that declining year over year. Right? These are kind of that, that classic user-generated content. Private rooms, same thing. This is the um, kind of lightly shaded red. Uh, that's declining year over year, private rooms, right? So I now have a house and I'm renting out a room in that house. So if you think about those two buckets, those buckets are people's primary residences, right? The, the dark red and the medium red. The lightest one of the three and the one that is growing year over year are full homes available more than six months. Clearly not a primary residence if it's being available for more than six months out of the year. Why this is important is because a lot of the rules and laws that local municipalities, towns, states have put into place revolve around whether or not you are renting a primary residence on Airbnb um, or or if you are in the business of, you know, buying a home and an apartment and then renting it out on, on these sites. There's a whole bunch of reasons why this is like the critical kind of uh, criteria. Uh, and there's a bunch of legitimate reasons and then, you know, uh, not so fun reasons, kind of corrupt reasons, but hey, that's life. So you got a mixture, you got a whole range of reasons why, but that's kind of what it is. Like New York City, they look at, is this your primary residence that you're renting versus, you know, are you, and, and do you own it and you're renting it versus are you renting it uh, from a landlord and then you're re-renting it and all these other kinds of considerations. So um, that's also why this is looking at, that chart was looking at kind of full homes. Anyway, the point is, um, this Domeo article came out on the information recently. A one rental startup gamed Airbnb. And they make a lot of really legitimate points here. Basically, you had a bunch of these employees at Domeo claiming that they had these private residences in Nashville that talks about, or New York City, and then renting those on Airbnb and then giving Domeo control to manage the rental and all that kind of stuff. So it, in the eyes of Airbnb and I guess the city, um, it was a a primary residence for many for for many of these cases, which they catalog in the article. It was not the primary residence, so that was not true. That was a lie. And 
um, that's a problem because not only are you lying to Airbnb, you're 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 lying to the 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 city, the state that you're in, um, but also you know, it's a, it's a company sanctioned <laughs> lie. And this was a systemic thing, right? They'd hire new managers in a market and then they'd say, great, now go verify yourself with Airbnb, put your driver's license into Airbnb so they could put more listings up. Right. So it would help the business. And, and, and the information does a good job kind of cataloging these issues um, and all these violations and so on and so forth. And b- basically if you th- Think about Airbnb. Uh, they have gotten around a lot of these issues, regulatory issues. They're supposed to go public in, in September by being neutral and saying, hey, you know what? Kind of like we're going to turn a blind, blind eye. Um, hey, renters, you need to follow the rules from the city or state that you operate in. And that's our policy, right? Airbnb is not here to advocate on behalf of the renter. Airbnb, for the most part, does not release renter information to the the cities, who would then you know try to look at the renters and then see if which ones of them are are lying. So they've kept a a wall there from sharing information with the cities, but by no means is Airbnb actively advocating to try and you know, aggressively change the rules and laws. They've kind of taken a, uh, a back seat to this and let the cities and states, you know, put in their own rules around this um, and, uh, and, and say, protect the hotel industry and, and different industries like that. If someone is vi- caught in violating these rules, then Airbnb kicks you off the platform. That's pretty much the stance, right? If it's kind of brought to their attention or you're falsifying information, then they ban you. You know, I wouldn't say they're like aggressively trying to vet all of these renters as diligently as they could. Otherwise, they'd probably kill off half the inventory on the site. Um, but when there is a violation or someone does get caught who's breaking the rules, then they say, oh, that was really bad of you, renter, and I'm kicking you off. And Airbnb is not responsible. That's kind of the stance. Now, this was not always the case. When Airbnb was getting going, they actually participated in a lot of very gray matter type of policies. We actually cover a few of those in the book. Like they were going on Craigslist and they were posting ads and listings on Craigslist or they were messaging people on Craigslist to harvest users off of Craigslist. They had, you know, a a myriad of listings which were clearly in violation. I mean, the regulation today has been written to account for the Airbnb and VRBOs of the world. But when Airbnb was starting in its first few years, those laws didn't account for a marketplace for short-term rental. So literally, Airbnb was in violation, and Airbnb's business was actually illegal in its top 20 markets for the first like three to five years of the company's existence. So the reason I bring this up is because you know, once your business gets to that breakout scale, once you kind of get to that um, critical mass point where where you have really turned consumer behavior um, into into your backcourt, right? Where consumer behavior is behind you, consumers want to use your product or service. You create so much value for for consumers and probably producers as well that it would be too difficult for the state or the government or the city to ban you outright, and you know, one could argue that every platform business is kind of a hedge against the regulation at the time. Can the platform business get that breakout velocity, get enough scale before the regulators catch up or ban the service, right? Or can the platform scale fast enough, create enough goodwill, uh, PR, brand, reputation that society deems it to be good, essentially, and that the officials can't ban this outright. Um, in other countries, we have seen services like Uber and Airbnb banned outright, um, just for for reference. And so, you know, I would say to some degree, every platform business is kind of a hedge against regulation. Can you scale fast enough to to overcome it? Um, 
But my issue with these kinds of articles is that Domeo, along with better known companies like Lyric and Saunders, and since its founding, the company has raised $70 million in venture capital along with $50 million in debt. It has hired uh, upwards of 160 employees and has had over 100,000 travelers use its services. Airbnb's official response to this is we have indefinitely suspended Do- all of Domeo's associated host accounts and listings as we expand our investigation into their activity dating back to 2016. We will not hesitate to take aggressive action to remove suspicious content from our platform. And depending on the outcome of our des- investigations, we will determine the appropriate long-term action to take against these accounts. Let's pause there. I'm willing to guarantee that people inside of Airbnb knew what Domeo was doing. This is not some shocker news to Airbnb. Airbnb, very smart people, lots of good data. There's actually a function. All these managers were assigning their their primary residence homes over to Domeo. So you don't think that some, you know... um, supply side manager at Airbnb would look at Domeo, who, as the information says, has raised collectively over a hundred million dollars between uh, equity and debt capital, that this business with over a hundred million dollars in funding over a hundred thousand customers over the past four years, that no one at Airbnb said, hmm, I wonder if Domeo has a systemic problem. I wonder if they're kind of skirting our rules and issues. Because by the way, Airbnb has taken action against a few specific accounts of Domeo's on Airbnb. And they treated them as kind of individual cases. But they never launched a broader investigation. What this article from the information talks about is that Airbnb would kind of kick off these these one-off circumstances when say Nashville was getting grumpy at at some of the Domeo people, and then Airbnb would take action, right? But now that the story is blown up, now all of Domeo is under review. So again, Airbnb is not the um, kind of angel in this story. Airbnb knows what's going on here, okay? It is in their best interest to take some action, but not ultra-aggressive action. Because otherwise, Airbnb would have a big problem. As we saw in the first graph, All of the growth in listings is coming from these kinds of more professional uh, (laughs) renters. So Airbnb is kind of in a very precarious position on this one. But here's my other issue with the reporting. Then they go, so they talk about all of Domeo's infidelities and they say, but it's unusual for a startup with prominent VC backers like Domeo to employ such tactics. and. Here's the problem with this kind of, you know, these just kind of like blanket fake statements. It's just not true. All of these platform startups, and this isn't even a platform startup, Domeo, but so many startups and a lot of the platform startups for not just like a few months, but a few years. And in those few years, they're getting money from these prominent VC investors. They are hacking their way to not like computer hacking, but business hacking, product hacking, uh, user acquisition hacking. They are trying out a bunch of different creative tactics. We've seen Uber get ridden up on a bunch of these, right? Where they would have like literally like burner cell phones and credit cards and they'd have employees go take lifts to try to recruit the lift drivers while in, in the passenger seat, right? I mean, or they were doing it maliciously and booking lift rides and then canceling on the drivers last minute. Right? Like every platform has these war stories. Not saying that the war stories are okay, but, you know, I feel like this article unfairly makes Domeo out to be some horrible startup business that is so unique to the real estate industry that no other one of these real estate startups would ever do something like this. And it's just not true, right? Airbnb itself has done a lot of these things. And Airbnb itself, I guarantee, knew. Long before any state, New York City, Nashville knew, they knew what Domeo was doing. And so, I don't know. I just feel like these articles take a very aggressive stance against uh, 
you know, uh, against the company that everyone wants to beat up on. They don't do justice in terms of <clears throat> providing an equal spec or an equal assessment of all the parties <clears throat> and how they have behaved. So with, with these blanket statements like that, right? Like Domeo is the exception. Domeo is not the exception. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.